So just a couple pieces of, uh, well, let, me, let me go back. First of all, welcome to uh, this webinar today at Unified State Plan Modification, a stakeholder perspective. Thank you for joining us. So a few pieces of housekeeping. You should have the ability to unmute your mics and later in this webinar, we hope you do. Um, we want to hear from you. But in the meantime, unless we're at a point of uh, interaction, we ask that you keep your uh, mic or phone muted just to keep uh, any background noise or uh, confusion down. If you have a question uh, throughout this first part of the presentation that, that's not the necessarily an interaction part of the presentation, go ahead and put that into the chat. Someone from our team uh, will monitor that and address those questions as they come up as needed. So our general agenda for today is as follows. We're gonna start with some quick introductions of the team here. We're gonna go over the Unified State Plan. We're going to do an overview of the Unified State Plan modification process. We'll go over how content is created for the Unified State Plan and the modification process. We'll go over some stakeholder engagement efforts. We'll ask a few general feedback questions of the group at large, and then we'll move into specific uh, stakeholder feedback. So my name is Drew Thomason. I'm joined by my colleagues, Bethany Yeager and Mitch Parrish. We are with KEB and we're a neutral convener, convener of the various partners in the state's workforce development system. We're helping facilitate the unified state plan modification process. The state's workforce development system is made up of programs that provide things like unemployment insurance, uh, to individuals who find themselves without a job, assist in connecting businesses and job seekers, helps build up a pipeline of skilled workers, assist workers with disabilities, assist veterans, and much more. Under the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA for short, the governor of each state must provide a four-year plan to the federal government to spell out the vision for the state's workforce development system. The Unified State Plan, as it's called, shows the integration of workforce, education, and economic development policies. The plan can be broken down into two general sections. The first section outlines the general economic and labor force conditions and projections. This part of the plan also sets the goals and it articulates the vision for the next four years for the workforce development system. The other general section of the Unified State Plan includes strategies to accomplish those goals and vision. And it also has specific activities that are describe how the state's workforce system will accomplish those strategies. The Unified State Plan is the guiding document for the state's workforce development system, which is made up of 16 required programs across six state agencies. Because the workforce system is so broad and diverse in the range of services offered to businesses and job seekers, the Unified State Plan is a vehicle to coordinate all of those programs. RIOA requires that all of these groups work together towards a common vision and strategy for meeting the needs of businesses, job seekers, and workers. So that's the general background of what the Unified State Plan is. A four-year guiding document to steer all partners in the state's workforce development system in the same direction. But four years is a long time to go without any adjustments, uh, the WIOA law requires the state to modify the plan at the midpoint, so two years into the four-year horizon of the plan. The process provides the chance to review the direction the workforce development system is heading and make mid-plan corrections and adjustments based on economic fluctuations. This modification will be different than uh, previous modifications. So past modifications generally are focused on um, changes in the labor market and economy. 
And while this modification will certainly reflect uh, economic and labor market changes, just think, uh, the unified state plan that we are operating under now was crafted well before words like COVID, remote work, essential workers were part of the general public's vocabulary. A lot has happened in the past two years. So because of the significance of the, uh, the pandemic and how that has impacted the economy and labor market over the past two years, instead of a simple update um, that would adjust some numbers and maybe a few of the plans, uh, this modification will serve as a bridge between that pre-pandemic unified state plan that we're operating under currently and a new 2024 unified state plan that will articulate a new vision, goals, and strategies. Um, it will be uh, informed by a lot of activity over the next two years. Regardless of how of what is in a modification or the state plan, um, there are four factors that drive the content that are that is part of the plan. And those uh, factors are federal guidelines and regulations, data, emerging programmatic trends, and stakeholder engagement. So let's talk about federal guidelines and regulations first. These are the must-haves as decided by the WIOA law. I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. It seems like my PowerPoint just quit. If you'll bear with me a second, I will open it back up. There we go. So as I was saying, these federal guidelines um, and regulations are the must-haves as decided by the WIOA law and uh, continuing rules and regulations issued by the federal government. Uh, these are laws, rules, regulations that all states must follow and include in their plans. It provides the framework for the plans and it creates uh, the boundaries that we have to work in when developing a plan or a modification. To use a metaphor, uh, these are the rules of the road. They're the, the speed limits uh, that, that we have to operate within. So if the federal law and regulation and rules um, are the rules of the road that we have to follow, data is our map, it's our roadmap. It helps show us where the economy and labor market has been and where, based on historical data, is heading over the next several years. For example, data about in-demand jobs help set activities around how to train up workers to fill those jobs. The data reflects the reality on the ground and it helps us understand what's happening in the past and where the economy and labor market might be heading. So now that we know the rules of the road and have a map that shows us some general direction uh, where the economy and labor market is heading, we move on to emerging programmatic trends. You can think of these as uh, signs on the highway that say construction next five miles or detour ahead. Programmatic trends come from those administering, administrating the various programs within the state's workforce development system. They see what is working and what is not and how services are administered and delivered and how they can be improved or adjusted to better serve those receiving those services. So to review, we have the rules of the road, we have a map and general direction, and we know about some construction or updates that are happening to make the road better. The last piece that we need is feedback from the people who have traveled that road before. So that's where stakeholder engagement comes into play. That's where you come into play. Uh, we know stakeholders from businesses, to chambers of commerce, to workers, to job seekers, to advocates have valuable insight into where the economy and labor market will head over the next several years, as well as specific suggestions about how we can improve the workforce development system to better serve everyone. To date, uh, the subcommittee that is running the unified state plan modification process has undertaken several stakeholder engagement activities. So first of all, there has been an inventory of current reports and studies that have been completed. We're aware that uh, many groups are doing similar outreach and we only want to ask uh, the same questions that businesses, job seekers, and service providers want. We want, don't want to have to duplicate efforts either from 
our end or from you having to answer the same question several times. So the USP working group started with this inventory uh, that, we're, that we knew about, including uh, feedback and reports that are already done or in progress. Some examples of what we found include a report called Advancing Workforce Equity in Chicago, a blueprint for action, a report from the US Department of Labor on Illinois' COVID response and recovery, and a study on designing a workforce system to improve customer access and outcomes. Ongoing stakeholder engagement that we are monitoring uh, include the work that the Governor's Commission on Workforce Equity and Access is doing, as well as a, the statewide Black Business Survey. So after we completed that inventory, took stock of it, uh, we analyzed that data, we crafted several surveys to fill in knowledge gaps that we noticed with the um, existing stakeholder engagement that is happening. Uh, hopefully, you took one of those surveys uh, as part of the uh, joining this webinar today. If not, I put the links to those surveys into the chat. Um, you can take some time later after the, the presentation to fill out the survey that best represents the stakeholder group that you belong to. We would be very appreciative of that. Today is another way we're gathering the human perspective around the data that we already have. Sorry about that, I don't know why that keeps happening. All right, and then uh, the, the upcoming uh, stakeholder engagement that we have is a webinar beginning of February uh, that will also coincide with the start of accepting public comments on the draft unified state plan modification. Uh, we hope you'll attend that webinar so you can see how we take the feedback from today from those surveys and use it to inform the modification process. Now we're gonna ask uh, you a few questions so we get to better know uh, our audience before we head into stakeholder specific questions. So we'll start with a real easy one. Let's see where everyone is coming from today. So you should have that poll up for you now. All right. All right, thank you everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll. And I'll show you the results. It looks like, uh, we have a, a good, uh, we have at least one person coming from every part of the state uh, with the majority of people coming from uh, Chicago, Western and Central Illinois. Thanks for joining us. We move on to our second poll. So what best describe, describes you uh, in relation to the state's workforce system? All right, it's like most people have finished this, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. We'll share the results with you. Looks like we have a, a good spread between business, um, advocates, required partner staff, and uh, board members. So that's great to see that we have um, people from throughout the, the workforce development system joining us today. And then just to, uh, to kind of get our, our shift our thinking towards um, giving your input, um, why, why are you here today? Uh, what's the main outcome you hope to see from today's uh, session? So you should have a text box, box up. Uh, so if you can go ahead and just start filling that out, that would be great. Can everyone see that text box? Yeah, there should be, Adam. Let me 
looks like we a couple of people have found that. Yeah, and if, if you can't see that uh, chat box, go ahead and just uh, put it into the, 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 ch the general chat. If you just want to type into there um, kind of the outcome you hope to see from today's session. Thanks, Kelly and Adam, for putting that into the, uh, the public chat. Appreciate that. All right. Thanks everyone for participating in those beginning engagements. Uh, just real quick, we're gonna head out, head into break rooms here in a minute. Um, we'll open up those break rooms and we ask that you join the one that best represents you. So we'll have breakout rooms for uh, business and industry. We'll have a breakout room for required partner staff as well as board members. And then if you're a job seeker, worker, or an advocate for job seekers and workers, um, go ahead and stay in this main room. That's where you will be doing your breakout set, uh, section. Real quick, uh, before we do that, I just want to lay out kind of uh, the modification timeline for you. So we are uh, completing this online stakeholder survey, uh, hopefully next week. Then, as I mentioned earlier, We'll open up for a public comment um, on the draft modification at the start of February. And coinciding with that, uh, we will go ahead and uh, also um, have a webinar for, for you to in, explain how we uh, used your input to make those changes. And then the final modification will be available in March. Real quick, before, so before we go into breakout rooms, it looks like um, we're still going to do breakout rooms, but because the majority of people, it seems, are um, are going to be required partners, uh, required partner staff or board members, I think what we'll do is we'll go through some questions that are going to be put to everyone, and you'll see at the top of the slide when we get to, to that question, um, kind of what stakeholder lens we want you to apply. And, and I'll reiterate that out loud too. Um, we're still gonna go into to breakout rooms um, towards the end of this. Uh, so everyone can um, maybe give more detailed feedback. Um, but for, for the time being, let's stay together and start, uh, start looking at some of these questions we have. So, uh, Two ways you can give your feedback. If you want to turn on your mic and answer these questions, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, we understand. You go ahead and put those into the chat and we can kind of respond and follow up on those. So this first question uh, is for business, business or um, industry folks. Um, so for those of you who are um, a required partner staff or a board member, if you can kind of Look at these questions and answer them as you think um, through the lens of a, of a business or industry interacting with the workforce development system. So the first question is, uh, what did you learn from your experiences during COVID that changed or continues changing your talent needs or your approach to meeting those needs? Are there key skills evolving? Are you moving toward or away from certain skills or occupations? So if anyone from the, the business or industry uh, sector, stakeholder group wants to, to uh, address that, or if we could have, um, if anyone else wants to address that, just remember we're doing that through the lens of a, of a business or industry. And like I said, feel free. Um, if you wanna take, I'll, I'll 
I'll be quiet here for a minute or two so we can kind of all think about this. Um, and if you want to turn on your mic, we are more than welcome. Uh, you're more than welcome to do that. But also, if you just want to respond in the chat, um, we'll, we will be recording answers that way, too. Yeah, that, that's a yeah. Maybe we re, reframe this question. So, if you are um, staff that serve businesses through the American Job Center, through uh, an American Job Center, uh, what are you hearing about these trends from those businesses? Are you hearing from those businesses? Thanks, Sherry. I'll read this uh, response. Uh, Sherry, is, is it all right if I read this response to the group? I see that was a direct message, so I don't want to, uh, to share something that maybe wasn't meant to be shared with the public. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Sherry says that stakeholders are cut off from the services they need. There's a disconnect between them and career planners with the doors closed and now appointment only meetings. IDES is focused on the fraud that developed and unable to meet the demand for employment services. Let's go ahead and move to the, the next question. So again, uh, thinking through the lens of uh, a business or uh, an industry stakeholder, what are some emerging technology or other trends that you are seeing in your industry that may require new skill sets for workers? And again, um, if you're a staff that serve businesses through an American Job Center, um, what have you heard as uh, emerging technology or other trends um, that businesses are having to adapt to and are looking for? Um, new skill sets from workers. I'm sure you all have very valuable feedback. We'd love to, to hear it. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, the, the ability to effectively communicate virtually 
When it comes to uh, new trends um, with skill sets, let me see uh, maybe a thumbs up or show of hands. You can do that via the reaction pod, the same uh, place where you would uh, mute or unmute yourself. Um, how many people are, are seeing uh, new trends regarding remote work? Jeffrey says, yeah, latest technologies like Zoom and knowing how to navigate. All right, thanks all. Let's go ahead and move on. We're gonna, let's, uh, since we have such a large uh, group of, uh, staff and board members. Let's move on to those questions. Maybe you can address those a, a little bit um, better. So what lessons uh, were learned as you uh, improve virtual service delivery, uh, especially when uh, American job centers um, had to move virtually? Anyone wanna turn on their mic and address this. Oh yeah, uh, so one comment coming in is offering numerous options for virtual service. Uh, so Zoom, other web conferencing platforms, phone, text, email. Not anyone else. What did we learn from virtual service delivery? And how can we, well, let me reframe that. So um, I think we definitely learned lessons from virtual service delivery. How can we apply those lessons going forward? Um, what came out of that that we can um, learn from and, and maybe change um, how we operate. Thanks, Jerry. We are able to communicate among ourselves, but the typical customer needs a way in the door. Yeah, virtual service delivery is here to stay and employers and businesses need to adapt to that. I would uh, maybe extrapolate that even further that, that some form of virtual or remote work is here to stay. Um, and so businesses and employers are having to adapt to that as well. How can we, um, what, did I hear someone come on the mic? That was me, Drew. I was just going to say that uh, from a customer's perspective, uh, you know, not everybody has the same technology uh, capabilities or accessibility. Uh, so being able to offer services through multiple virtual means, uh, it was important during COVID and still is uh, and still will be going forward. All right. Uh, does anyone else have anything they want to uh, to offer for this? All right, well, let's move on to, to the next question. So equity um, is going to play a much larger 
role in the, the workforce development system. Um, Illinois has always been at the forefront of using a, a lens of equity when addressing our workforce, um, and it's going to be even more so. I think we can see that through the, the governor's commission that is happening and some other uh, efforts. So what kind of tools would help you um, examine the equity of your program? Do you like regional, uh, regionalized data? Would that help? Um, guidelines from the state? Um, what kind of tools would help you examine the equity of your programs? Pre-application questionnaire, regional data, partner data, yeah. All right, let's move on to the... Uh, Oh, customer surveys where we can open, when we can open to the public again. Certainly, anyone else have uh, any, any other thoughts or tools that, that the system could provide you to help examine the equity of your program? All right, let's move on. So last uh, question here for, uh, for required staff and, and board members. Um, what ideas that you have, um, do you have that would improve regional coordination in response to emerging needs? So if we put this, um, think about this um, through the lens of the, the last two years, um, you know, how, how can we better respond um, to emerging needs. All right. Well, well, let's go ahead and wrap up uh, this section. Uh, I'll, I'll just put out a general question uh, to you um, oh, real quick. Someone did have an idea there, so I'll, I'll share that with the group. So uh, ideas to uh, improve regional coordination in response to emerging needs, uh, partner engagement, understanding the MOU and requirements, uh, required we owe a training for partners, business visits and surveys in coordination with that. Thank you for that. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up today. Um, so do, do you have any questions for us um, that we didn't address about the USP modification process? And um, maybe share your thoughts with, um, 
what you would need to, to feel confident in sharing your feedback with us going forward. Because like I said, stakeholder uh, engagement and feedback are very important to this uh, modification process. It really helps um, highlight areas that, that um, we need to address. Again, you can share those, those thoughts um, in the chat. That's perfectly fine if you don't feel like turning on your microphone. So if you have any other questions about the modification process or uh, any thoughts on um, how to best get stakeholder feedback and engagement around the Unified State Plan, please share those in the chat or turn on your mic. We'd love to hear your voice. I'm sure everyone's uh, had enough of, of my talking for, for today. All right, well, I don't see any um, questions coming in. I'm gonna put my email into the chat. If you have any further questions about this, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to me. Not, not only if you have um, further thoughts on stakeholder engagement, but if you have questions about the modification process, um, the MOU process, the local regional planning, anything um, along those lines, feel free to, to send that to, to me. The KEB staff here can, can address those. And if we can't address those, we can certainly connect with people that, that can answer your, your questions or concerns. Again, I hope you took the, the opportunity to fill out the uh, survey that best represents you as a stakeholder. We will be sending that out again, uh, hopefully later today. So if you have not completed one of those surveys, please complete that. And with that, have a uh, great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.